Welcome to this week's Toy Tuesday. Now, this is the pre-intro before I go and film the intro on the prom. And the reason I'm doing that is because this week's Toy Tuesday is about this guy up here. But then again, if you had seen the thumbnail and read the title, you'd know that already. And I'm gonna get him down, go on the beach and film the intro to this week's Toy Tuesday. Welcome to my latest Toy Tuesday video. As always, I'm in my favorite spot on the beach and it is a glorious sunny day here today. You can even make out the tower this time. For this Toy Tuesday video, I wanted to look at one of cinema's greatest villains. Not that guy, this guy. Now I'm gonna go back to the shop because it's absolutely freezing here, even though it's nice and sunny. Right, I've been filming for a little bit now and I've just looked at the footage and realized it looks like I've got massive bat wings coming out of the side of my head. And that's because I'm stood in front of a massive dragon but that's not what this week's toy tuesday is about it's about him so i'm just going to move the camera and get back to toy tuesday -ing. i think this is a better spot to film in i've not got bat wings sticking out the side of my head now so at the start of every toy tuesday i like to welcome all our new subscribers and again this week there have been a lot so thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed some of my past videos i hope you enjoy this one now if you have any comments you'd like to leave or you have any stories about star wars toys or darth vader that you want to leave in the comment section below please do i'd love to read about them and I'd love to hear about them so put them in the comment section below to all our regular subscribers and viewers and commentators and people who share the stories all across my different social medias thank you for uh, continuing to support the channel it's greatly appreciated now what I'm going to do is give you a quick history of Darth Vader in my Darth Vader tribute Darth Vader tribute toy Tuesday a quick history of dark water Lucas first outline for Star Wars featuring Dirk Starkiller was written in 1973 to sell the film to United Artists who passed on it, as did Universal Pictures and Disney. Luckily, 20th Century Fox took a punt, mainly because of Lucas's success with the film American Graffiti. So the ball is now rolling and Lucas enrolls Ralph McQuarrie to do some concept art for the film, to help him outline the characters like Dark Father and explain his visual elements of Star Wars to absolutely everybody involved because no one understood any of it, mainly because all of it was in Lucas's brain. and because he was hopeless at articulating his ideas to absolutely everyone. After many script rewrites and two months before filming, the Gary Vader costume is started. Lucas's original vision for the character was a very tall, very dark, fluttery figure that was kind of spooky. Thankfully, no one listened to Lucas and the screen legend is born, albeit an amalgamation of the ideas from the brain of George Lucas, the drawings of Ralph McQuarrie, the designs of John Mollo, the sculpting of Brian Moore, and the sewing of Berman's costumers. Now they've got the costume, the question is where to find a thespian to fulfill the role of Prince Valorium. Well, Lucas had spotted our potentially tall, dark, fluttery figure, not him, in the film A Clockwork Orange. Better known to us as the Green Cross Code Man, Lucas offered the choice of two roles to David Prowse, whom Wikipedia describes as an English bodybuilder, as opposed to an American one, I suppose. Just kidding. A weightlifter and a character actor in that specific order. Crowes rejected the role of Chewbacca after wearing a furry costume in Space 1999 and really not liking it, preferring to be the villain. And we now finally have the movie version of Darth Farmer. Now, it's no secret that Prowse and Lucas were not friends. I kind of feel sorry for Prowse because A Clockwork Orange was banned from distribution for 20 years and this is a film that gave its other characters real cult status. I also think not knowing that his voice was going to be dubbed over until he saw the film premiere was a real blow to him, but I do think the combination of the two actors James Earl Jones and David Prowse together made the perfect match, bringing Vader to life. Then with Prowse later confirming some leaked plot points in an interview, it really cheesed Lucas off, so his roles in the film were reduced at times using other actors or stunt coordinators in his place. The final blow not being in the reveal scenes in Jedi, when Luke removes what is known as the Vader redemption helmet. Instead, we saw, I think it was Sebastian Shaw, the actor, uh, or if you're under 20, then you saw this guy. Now my one main complaint with the classic Star Wars toy line is the lack of variety in the Darth Vader figures. because you got seven Lukes and five Han Solos, but you only got pretty much one Darth Vader. 
apart from this one with a slightly longer lightsaber at the front. And I think Woolworths did a special one where he had a fluffy cloak, but they're incredibly hard to find. Possibly even a later figure, not in the classic range. So that's a real shame. This is a cool thing, by the way. I love this. In the middle of it, in the back, it says, uh, Don Post Studios, do not use as a safety helmet. If you can make that out in there. I think that's absolutely hilarious. Imagine wearing that on a building site. Sorry, Gov, it's not regulation. Ow, it's got Velcro in it. So I know I'm being super picky about the classic Vader figure, but I do think they could have put a better cape on it or revisited it, or maybe when Jedi was out, do that redemption, this redemption scene helmet where you can pull that off and you've got all that incredible detail inside. Because I'll drop it otherwise. This is a great model in one fourth scale. If I'm just gonna pull it apart without Hopefully without breaking it. So, that is, yeah, I've broken it. So that's the schnoz bit there. And that's the bit there. Now, I think in the film, this was one of those sort of 1950s, very gruesome dental mouth openers that they used to make this. It's got all this detail on the back that you saw in, Jed uh, in, sorry, in Empire, when you just see the back of his head in that weird chamber thing. But um, it's a shame they didn't do that in a smaller scale, not obviously to this detail, but with a figure. I think that would have been really cool. The thing about the more modern figures like Sideshow and this coat of Bakia is just the detail in them is incredible. They really, really, really do the research and, and get it pretty, pretty close to accurate. That's a fantastic figure. Now you can't actually buy this one. What happens is, is you buy a set of bounty hunters in the same scale and you get a piece with each one that builds this. And you also get, I'll hold this one out, dropping him a couple of spare arms as well. This one being the most useful for scratching that itch you just can't reach. Now, a lot of these are featured in um, Toy Tuesday, no, Toy of the Day videos that I did in lockdown previously. And I think I've done a Darth Vader special where I've got an EFX helmet, which we've actually sold now in the video. So what I'll do is I'll link that to the end of this if I remember once I finish the video. So you can take a look at that one as well. It's a bit of an earlier video that I did earlier on this year of Darth Vader stuff. So that is this week's Toy Tuesday. I hope you've enjoyed my little tribute to Darth Vader. I will be back next week with another Toy Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Take care, stay safe, and I hope you're okay. Now we're out of lockdown and everything is a little bit better and we're back at work. At least I can get the shop open now, which is a big relief for me. So take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next week for another Toy Tuesday. Problems are very busy today.